Let me get your initial read then on this big move to the downside and uh, arguably uh, the broader argument that this is not necessarily a very reliable haven given the amount of volatility that's in there. Well, I beg to differ. Uh, actually, this mentality is the reason why most people don't get to profit off Bitcoin in the long run. When it makes a new all-time high, it's too dear and too expensive. When the uh, market gives you a correction of just 10 percent as a buying opportunity, people say, was that it? Is Bitcoin dead? It's been a, a Bitcoin quarter. It's been a Bitcoin year. It's been a Bitcoin decade. And we'll definitely have new all-time highs by the end of this uh, 2020. Anthony, good morning. It's managed. Yes, but we did see some rather unraveling go ahead, could take form in 2017. What's different this year to 2017? What's the crossing of the Rubicon, uh, as Novogratz would say? It's a very different rally. We see that at Nexo, at the platform, we see the whole deal flows, the way people borrow, interact with crypto. And let me tell you this, up to 80% of this rally is due to smart money, institutional investors. Sure, the retail is participating also uh, in this latest uh, leg up, but it's nowhere near what we saw in 2017, 2018, where you had everyone and their grandmother maxing out their credit cards on Coinbase just to get uh, their Bitcoin. It's a very, very different this time around. Uh, and Tony, you've got Bitcoin whales, though. So 2% own what? About 95% of Bitcoin. That's an abnormally large slice of the market. And that means that a small number of people get to have a say about which direction the market goes. And it also means that some of the smaller investors are very, very vulnerable. That's not an indication of a maturing asset class, is it? Well, this uh, unjust uh, uh, distribution of wealth is true for the dollar, is true for the stock market, it's true for Bitcoin. What we have been seeing, however, is a shift from you know, predominantly whales holding Bitcoin to the Stanley Druckenmillers of this world quietly accumulating Bitcoin throughout the summer and early spring as well. Uh, and right now they're talking their book up and this gives it a much more fundamentally sound basis from which to perform. And, you know, I am very convinced that we have merely scratched the, uh, the surface here. And Citigroup are with you. They had a, a rather sort of bullish call up at over $300,000. If PayPal was the moment, uh, PayPal saying, look, we will use Bitcoin and, and other digital currencies. If that was the big moment of 2020, what is the next evolution step? What's the next turnkey to get me up over $20,000 in the near term? Well, the, you know, the, the, the uh, big name investors like Paul Tudor Jones, they created a, a safe space, so to speak, for smaller managers who were perhaps afraid to, uh, you know, talk to their investors and to their LPs in order to uh, get invested in Bitcoin. Now this uh, burden is gone, so we'll see a lot more institutional investors coming in continue uh, to see uh, smart money come in. And then later on, I, will I think it's fair to say that uh, the retail is going to go in. And it's just, uh, you know, this perfect momentum of going up. Don't get me started on the macro environment, but the digital gold uh, narrative is stronger than ever. And if Bitcoin just captures like 10 percent of the total market cap of gold, we will be at $50,000 in no time. Yeah. Let's put the price action and the digital sort of currency conversation aside for a moment and get to some of the crypto exchanges and Bitcoin exchanges. How worried are you that one of the bigger ones could get hacked? I don't get worried about, uh, you know, exchanges getting hacked, companies going bust in the crypto space. I would argue that this is actually uh, to the benefit of all. Bitcoin and crypto are the only free markets that we have right now and the only markets where the true forces of the market get to get to, to, to be played out. And I think it's a uh, it's a good thing. And it contrasts very sharply to what is happening in the traditional sector, where you have all uh, kinds of excesses due to uh, interventionalist policies by the central banks, by governments. So 
you know, being able to fail within blockchain utterly uh, makes it more uh, resistance, even anti-fragile, to borrow from the Sinta lab here.